How's it going, everybody? It is I, Visual. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day, and welcome back to another Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon Wi Fi battle versus Joey Fontaine over here in the OU tier. So, if you do enjoy these every single day, make sure to leave a like on the video. And the team I'm using is in the description if you do want to try it out. It is made by Cold Dog. So, just gonna lead off with my choice scarf Victini, and it is just easily gonna U turn on Joey Fontaine's team as it should outspeed everything, hopefully, unless it's a scarf Tapu Coco. So he brought in Landers T. I U turn on that. And he let off an electric, so I guess he doesn't want to catch a V create to the face. I don't want to catch a Thunderbolt or a Volt Switch, so I just U turn. I bring in Garchomp. I see his leftovers Gar uh, Landers T, so that's pretty good. And I see that he's faster than me, too, as well, so that's pretty important. He's running a very fast Landers. He's not a bulky Landers. This Garchomp is at max speed, but it is pretty fast. Running a lot of speed on it, it hits 290, so. For sure, this Lando should be offensive. As uh, we both just trade rocks, I feel like rocks hurt him more than it hurts me, and I just decided to drag a tail. And I'm pretty much gonna try and hazard stack on Joey because Joey is pretty weak to Scarf Victini. He doesn't have a two good solution to V create, so if I get my spikes and you know stealth rocks up, I should be good to go to the spam V creates. Um, I do have Ferrothorn as always a good switch into Tapu of Coco, and I see that he's shiny, so I'm guessing it's gonna be timid Tapu of Coco since it's locked. But I don't know, Joey. I think uh, he has some ways to make it modest. So uh, that dazzling gleam did a little bit more than I expected, even though obviously it does absolutely nothing to Ferrothorn. Like you barely would tell, but um, Tapu of Coco usually would do like, like even less than that with dazzling gleam. So he brought a Magirna on my Ferrothorn, which I wasn't too scared of. He could have hit him Power of Fire, but I guess I will just scout and see if he does, because Magirna could run anything. I don't know what kind he is, so I'm just going to scout and see, and I just leech seed him, because I could take anything, because Ferrothorn doesn't go down to a hit and Power of Fire. So he just Ice Beam me, I'm like, alright, cool. He just has Ice Beam, probably Volt Switch, maybe Fleur Cannon, Iron Head, something like that, with a AV Magirna, that's what I'm guessing he is. I decided to go into Garchomp expecting a Volt Switch, but he brought in his Landris T. So I didn't expect that, but hey, that works too because Lander Steed can't knock me out unless maybe it has Inner Power Ice, but most Lander Steeds don't, especially uh, right now in the current meta. Back in uh, maybe a few months ago they did, but right now I rarely ever see Hidden Power Ice. I see Explosions, Stone Edge, U-Turn, and Earthquake mostly on Lander Steeds, or Defog and Stealth Rack like he does. So I drag until I'm into the Zydog, which is pretty cool because uh, you know Zygarde is banned in the OU tier, but Zydog isn't. So if you want a more frail or faster Zygarde, you got Zydog. So it is able to outspeed me and two shot me with the Thousand Arrows. I am able to get my Stealth Rocks up, which is pretty nice. And luckily he defogged away his rocks, so now only I have the Stealth Rocks on his side of the field, and he doesn't. I got to bring in Mega Manection because it is faster than Zygarde. I'm pretty sure he's banded, judging from the damage from the Garchomp. He shouldn't be doing that much because Garchomp is like EV, um, I think almost maxed in defense. So I just throw off the Hidden Power Ice just in case he wants to stay in, but he doesn't. He goes into Magirna, and I can just easily Volt Switch on Magirna because I can't knock it out with Flurry Thrower because I'm pretty sure it's a Soul Vest. A Soul Vest Magirna will definitely take that. So might as well just chip away at it and not take a Flare Cannon to the face if he did want to go for that. But he just went for Volt Switch, so he's getting momentum as I brought in Victini. But Victini has a U-turn as well, and I can get momentum back. He brought in Tapu Koko, and Tapu Koko outspeeds me. And I'm like, whoa, okay then. And then it Volt Switches, and that did it so much damage. I'm like, yeah, that was definitely Choice Scarf Mod is Tapu Koko. Um, that's what I'm assuming, which you can't really get unless you, you know, Pika Hex it. So, that's fine. Uh, I just go for the V crates, and I thought I would just knock out Top Coco, but that is not the case because it outsped me, like you guys saw. And uh, he just sacks Lander's Teeth, so it's not going to take it. Anyways, in comes the Mega Manectric, and it is going to be faster than me because V create does lower your speed, so I'm going to switch out. And also, it can intimidate me, which will lower my attack, and I won't be able to knock it out. So, I brought a Mega Manectric, and I was pretty sure Mega Manectric could take anything. I mean, it is a speed tie as well at the end of the day. So maybe I can outspeed him next, and then maybe I could flamethrower him, chip him away, so that V creates Victini can just blow him back. But he decides to just Volt Switch, so that's pretty good for me. Luckily he didn't Thunderbolt, because I think that would probably two-shot me. Maybe, maybe. So, um, he brought on top of Coco. I just decided to go into Ferrothorn, just not a chance. He doesn't go for Volt Switch, because maybe I can get a spike up. And also Ferrothorn's always nice, because I could utterly just wall top of Coco. Unless he's hit a power of fire, but the odds of that is pretty slim, because nobody really runs that. Anyways, 
uh, in came back the Mega Metric, so he's kind of got me in the loop of Volt Switch. Uh, he keeps on just Volt Switching on me, but I'm still gonna go back into Mega Manectric. Like I'd rather just sack Mega Manectric if that's the case, because I need Ferrothorn uh, to just wall tap Goku, utterly wall it, like so it can't do nothing versus me. I mean, he can continuously Volt Switch, but he's gonna get chipped away by Stealth Rocks, and I'm gonna try and get a spike up if I can. And uh, once Victini comes in, a Pokemon should go down. So he brought in Zygarde, expecting. I guess the electric or fire move. Obviously, I'm not gonna hit him power ice and mega manectric, so uh, he got that call right. I could have burned it, but it's a 10 percent chance, so it's pretty slim. So it's pretty safe for him to bring in Zygarde. But I do expect him to go for the extreme speed because obviously you're not faster than me unless you're scarfed. So yeah, that's why I brought in Ferrothorn. And plus, if he went for thousand arrows and I went for hidden power ice, I would, then he would have just sacked the Zygarde. But I mean. I doubt he would want to do that. So this is pretty good for me. I get a spike up, which is pretty huge because he has a lot of volt switching going on in his team. So it's not going to be uh, pretty good for him to keep on volt switching because literally everything is just Tapu Koko, Mega Manectric, Magirna, just volt switch, volt switch, volt switch. And bringing in that band of Zygarde. So I decided to sack my Mega Manectric over here. I don't want um, Ferret one day somehow get bopped by random Focus Blast or a Hidden Power Fire if he does have that, just in case. Um, but I doubt he would go for it, since he would have probably went for it before versus my Ferrothorn. So, knocks out Mega Manectric, in comes his Mega Manectric, and I bring in Victini, which is Choice Scarf, able to outspeed his, and I can easily just go for the V-Create and knock something out, since nothing on his team can take it from the range they're at. Maybe Zygarde can, but I don't know, after a spike in Stealth Rock? Probably not, since V-Create is so dang strong. So he decides to sack Magirna, which is smart because Magirna doesn't really do much versus my team. I don't really have um, a top of Lele or Mega Alakazam, but even then it's already low to the point where I can't take anything. So um, in comes his Choice Scarf Tapu Koko, and that's able to threaten me out with a Volt Switch, so I go back to Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn, like I said, I need this for his Tapu Koko to out of the wallet. I can't just sack it to a Flamethrower for Mega Manectric. That would be a dumb decision because then Tapu Koko will just rain terror against me. So, in came his Halucha. Finally, I was waiting for this to come out because I've been saving Tapu Fini in the back the entire time for Halucha. The reason being is it would sweep my team if I don't. I have to have something for Halucha, and Tapu Fini is that Pokemon. It is running a lot of defense too, so easily able to wall it, even if it does Swords Dance up and Poison Jab me. I mean, most of them don't carry Poison Jab, it's just like Acrobatics High Jump Kick, so. Yeah, you always gotta have something for those Haluchas. As you can see, he actually has own claws, so I guess he doesn't like missing his high jump kicks. Maybe he has own claws and Swords Dance, I'm not too sure. Either way, it doesn't matter because if you Swords Dance, if you own claws up, I will still live and I will knock him out with the Moon Blast after Rock, so that's pretty good. Now, in comes Top Coco, and it is getting whittled down. It only has one more switch and left, as you can see, so uh, it's getting pretty good for me. Late game. As uh, Victini is looking really nice once Tapu Koko is gone, I just click that V-Create. I go into Ferrothorn, like usual, on the Tapu Koko. Watch him bot me with a random pin power fire. That would be pretty um, funny if he saved that. But honestly, Ferrothorn could probably take that and then I could Leech Seed and still recover HP because Ferrothorn, um, especially defensive, just does not care if you're a non-stab fire move. Like, it just it just lives everything. That's why Ferrothorn is amazing at Leech Seeding. So. And just switching in at so many Pokemon in W2. Anyways, I decided to sack Tapu Fini because Tapu Fini doesn't really do much else. It was just kind of there for Halucha and I guess uh, getting up Mr. Terrain and other things. But versus Electric types and a Banded Zygarde, it doesn't really do much. Like, Banded Zygarde will two shot me with Thousand Arrows. I mean, I could Moonblast it, but I have my faith in my other Pokemon to take care of it. And with the hazards up, it's going to be pretty good. So. In comes Scarf Victini. I'm able to scare out Mega Manectric, and he decides to sack Tapu Koko, which is pretty nice. And um, now he decides to go back into Mega Manectric. So I guess he wanted to intimidate me, but I mean, it doesn't matter because you're literally on like 1 HP. So you're going to go down regardless to any move I go for. And I'm able to outspeed you because B Create didn't lower my speed since I didn't hit a target. So that's pretty good. And now his last Pokemon is the Zydog. And um, he is gonna not be able to outspeed Victini once I switch it out because I am gonna switch it out since I need the speed since, like I said, v, v create lowers your speed. And then that should give me a surefire way to win the game because at the range he's at, he should go down to whatever Victini goes for. So I just decide to sack Ferrothorn since Top Coco is gone, I don't need it anymore. And I do go down to 2000 arrows because Banded Zydog. I'm pretty sure, I don't know if it's Admiral or Jolly looking at the damage. I think it's Jolly. Maybe? I don't know. Because usually Zygarde and OE tier, back when 
Zygar 50% was in W tier. They always run Admin. So I don't know if you use Zydog if you're Admin or Jolly. Because Jolly is pretty nice to have the speed. You outspeed a lot of Pokemon. But at the same time, you don't have enough power to hit hard. And probably wall break teams. So I don't know. He's probably Admin. Just because it's more power. But I don't know. Either way, that's going to be GG versus Joey with the Scarf Victini putting in a lot of work. Just coming in and v creating this team so next up we got versus bambi looking at their team pretty scary with the charizard i gotta be careful with charizard i don't have too too much especially if it's x and dragon ants is up and just clicks flare blitz and dragon claw if it does have it but most people like to run roost now with earthquake flare blitz i mean it makes sense because it hits everything uh but yeah he has a pretty annoying team with ferrothorn magirna lando road and wash a lot of pivoting and hazards and then he has zero aura which could be very very scary zero aura is a pokemon that is very versatile like you don't see it too much in OU tier ever since it came out. Um, mainly, it's just in the UU tier now. So, and even in the UU tier, I mean, if you watch my weapon battle in the UU tier with Rip Slowbro, it beat down two of my ground types and just bulked up. So, I got to be careful of it. But this is the OU tier. This is a different game, a whole different ballpark. So, we'll see how well it performs. Anyway, I lead off a of guard time. We let off a of Rotom, and I go on the top of Phoenix, expecting a Will O Wisp, and I get that mess train up, so you can't status me. And I decided to just stay in here because I just wanted to get a Nature's Madness off. If he did go into Ferrothorn, I want that damage on that Ferrothorn. But he actually brought in Zero Aura. So he decided to go with the offensive maneuver versus me. So I can just go into my Guard Chomp. Even if he is Hidden Power Ice, I can take that. And I can see what kind of Zero Aura he is. And that would be a nice predict on his part if he doesn't want to do that. But he just goes for the knockoff. So that's pretty good for me. Because he takes all that rough skin and raw helmet damage. And then I see his Life Orb. So pretty much his Zero Aura did... Pretty much nothing because I go into Victini over here, he goes for close combat, and that is not going to do anything to Victini. I went to Victini just an all chance he had hidden power ice just as a scout, but what if he double knocked off? That would have been pretty bad because he would have done so much damage to Victini. Probably even knock it out, I don't know, uh, since it is life orb. And yeah, I mean, if I lived, I would lose my choice scarf, which would suck, but luckily that is not the case. He close combated, so um, I get to U turn on it, knock him out since I am scarfed. I outspeed Zero Aura, and I bring in Mega Manectric, and he brings in Lando, so over here. I kind of make a really risky play because Mega Manectric is very important for his team. It does a lot of work. But I just decided to stay in and go for the Empire Ice because I was like, I don't know if this Lando is going to Earthquake me. I mean, I have no switch into Earthquake, so I was like, maybe it just clicks Earthquake. But at the same time, I might as well just try and knock it out with the Empire Ice if it is not Scarf. And it actually turns out to be, I think, not Scarf. I mean, he said it was Scarf after the battle. And he said he probably just messed up the IVs or EVs or something like that. Either way, it went down. And I risked it for the biscuit and it worked out, so that's pretty awesome for me. Now, usually you would probably not want to stay in because it would earthquake you even at minus one attack because I do intimidate it. It will still knock you out if it's max attack, so I mean, who knows? Um, it's just if he U-turns, I still live and I get something off out of the turn. So it's just pretty much predictions. Like, it's, it's no more type matchup. It's just predictions. So, anyways... Uh, Rotom washes out and I bring in Tapafini and I am able to just get the mistrain up because I don't want to get will o -Wisp. Like I said, I want that for Garchomp, so I'm going to bring in Garchomp over here. And Garchomp is able to dodge a Volt Switch. It could take a Hydro Pump, which um, is fine because I do want to get Stealth Rocks up versus his team. Reason being is Charizard. Charizard is a massive threat. I need to, you know, whittle that down. That's why a lot of Pokemon, you don't see them anymore because of Stealth Rocks. They're just four times weak to it, like Articuno, Talonflame. A lot of other Pokemon are just weak to rocks, so... Yeah, that's why he has a Reliable Defogger, which is the Road and Wash. So you always gotta have that Reliable Defogger with a uh, Pokemon that is so weak to rocks. Volcarona, too, for example. So I bring in Ferrothorn as he went for the Defog. Forces him to Defog because he doesn't want the Charizard to take all that damage. And at least he gets rid of the rocks on my side of field, which is pretty good. Um, if he did get him up or ever wants to give him up again, you know, I'm just going to get him right back up, and he's forced to defog, so. Anyways, I go for Leech Seed on the Ferrothorn as it in comes to Charizard. I can't really go for much else because I expected Charizard to want to come out, and I can't let it get a free switch in because I need to somehow chip it away at it as much as possible if it is going to be X, because it's going to probably get a kill or two if it is X with, once it starts Dragon Dancing up. So, I bring a Garchomp, which lost his Rock Helmet, but that's fine. And then he throws off a Focus Blast, and he doesn't even Mega Ball. I'm like, huh? Okay, then I guess it's Charizard Y. I don't know. Um, I don't know why he's hiding it. Maybe it's because he wants to have as much Sun Turns as possible. That's the only thing I could assume. Other than that, 
Um, whenever you see Folk's Blast, it should be Charizard Y. Charizard X doesn't really run Folk's Blast. I mean, they could run Fire Blast. I've seen that, Charizard X Fire Blast, but other than that, it's like Hidden Power Ice as well. But, I mean, it does not matter because this is Charizard Y, as you can see. And it went for Folk's Blast. And it knocks me off the Solar Beam, which is fine. I lose out my Garchomp, but I get to bring a Mega Manectric, and now Mega Manectric, looking at his team, looks beautiful. Um, also, I did Flamethrower his Ferrothorn, I forgot to say that, like, a while back. You guys saw it, I mean, if you're watching the battle, I just didn't say it, because, um, you know, he wanted to get his edges up, but I wanted to whittle down his Ferrothorn so that I can knock him out pretty fast and easier, as you can saw, as you can see. I mean, the sun was up, so, I mean, I guess the Flamethrower earlier didn't really matter, but maybe it made him more inclined to sack his Ferrothorn right there. So, in came Magear and I just decided to go for the Flamethrower, and then he throws off the all out Pummel, and I'm guessing Folks Blast. And I'm like, oh no, this is not good, because I need Mega Manic Trick to just utterly destroy his team. Like, he has no switch into Thunderbolt. Um, he lost his Lander T, which, by the way, was so risky versus, like, my Mega Manic Trick. Um, I could have just lost my Mega Manic Trick right there, and then that would have been terrible versus his team. Because um, you can see, like, he has no switch into Thunderbolt. Luckily, I live that fight EMZ, which is huge. And I able, I'm able to knock out his Magear with the Thunderbolt. Which is awesome afterwards. And then in comes Rotom. I decided to go for the Volt Switch because I need Mega Manectric to just destroy him. He only has Charizard Y and Rotom Watch, so yeah. I decided to sack uh, the Victini, so the Victini, you know, I don't really need it. Might as well speed up the process because um, I could just draw it out, go into Ferrothorn, yada yada yada, but might as well just sack Pokemon here and there, bring a Mega Manectric, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, and that's gonna be it because I, mean, I don't really care about keeping Victini. I'm sorry, Victini, you just. It's to speed up the process, okay? You did work the last game. So, I mean, I could have kept it for Bolt Striking to Charizard Y, but that could miss too, so this doesn't miss. So, knock out Rotom Watch with the Thunderbolt. I was pretty sure Thunderbolt can knock it out from the Rage's Ats because Bolt Switch did um, almost 50%, so I was like, yeah, Thunderbolt should do that much. And then Charizard Y is the last Pokemon, and down it goes. So, that's going to be a GG versus Bambi. Next up, we got us versus Loco Ghoul. And looking at his team, we got Mega Mawile, wow, so that's going to be a pretty annoying versus me. It just clicks play rough, and hopefully it doesn't have Fire Fang for Ferrothorn. Hopefully it's the, like, the Swords Dance Sucker Punch knockoff sets and not have Thunder Punch as well. That could be bad. Other than that, yeah, Mega Mawile is the biggest threat. Um, I have, well, Thunderous is a big threat too, but hopefully I can play around that. And then he has the Thunder Cruel Ferrothorn Landorus Core right there. And, um, yeah, Greninja, I don't, wasn't too sure what Greninja would be. I was thinking it was going to be, like, Rocks, Lando, uh, I don't know, maybe Scarf Lando, to be honest. It could be either or, because Greninja, I don't know if it would be Scarf on this team, maybe, maybe, because he doesn't really appreciate Charizard, but he does have Lando for Charizard. And then, the Thunderous is probably going to be z looking at his team. So I lead off with the Garchomp. As he leads off with the Landorus T, intimidates me and goes for the U-turn, which is very nice because you take all that beautiful Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin Chip. I love having that Rough Skin and Rocky Helmets whenever you just switch it in on a U-turner. It's just beautiful because they take all that chip, especially on Tornadus too, like Rocky Helmet. So, in comes the Tentacruel. I was guessing it's just going to go for Rapid Spin. I mean, it's going to take so much chip from Rapid Spin because, I, like I said, I have all that Rock Helmet and Rough Skin, but he actually gets a T-Spike up, so that's pretty smart. Whittle down my team, and um, since my Defogger is Tapu Fini, it still gets Toxic Spiked because I get Toxic before I get the Mistrina, so that kind of sucks. I go for Earthquake as he throws off the Ice Beam. I was pretty confident I could live the Ice Beam since Garchomp is a fat mother trucker. Even though I'm four times weak to ice, Garchomp just does not care. He is able to live it. And plus, Cyndaquil is not really the s strongest, you know, Pokemon. And also, at the same time, it's not Stab. And it looks like he's running a lot of speed since he outsped me. So I'm guessing he's probably like max HP, max speed or something like that. Either way, I brought Nafini on the, Gar the Greninja because I didn't want to give it Battle Bond, even though my Garchomp was pretty low. Uh, still, Battle Bond Greninja is a totally different monster than regular Greninja. I just don't want to give it Battle Bond. So, looks to be Battle Bond Greninja. I just utterly wallow a Feeny, but it did toxic me, so it is going to whittle me down a little bit. He brought on Thunderous as I go for a Natured Madness. Just might as well try and get, nab that Ferrothorn if he does want to bring it in. But uh, it's smart for him to bring in the offensive threat because I pull a risky switch over here into Manectric, expecting an electric move, but I probably shouldn't have done that because it's so obvious I have the Lightning Rod Manectric. He throws off the Fighting MZ, and that is going to below back my medic drag. I should have just sacked Garshop out. Like, I really didn't need it. I guess I just wanted to keep it maybe as sack fodder for like a U-turn on Landers or something like that. That could have been nice because if he wanted a U-turn, he would take all that rough skin rock helmet chip again, but 
Alas, I lose Manectric, which is very, very nice for his team. It intimidates them all while flamethrowers everything, HP aces everything. It's just like right there, it just took a real big blow to me. So over here, I went to Skull Peep because I wanted to get rid of the T spike, but I probably should have went to Victini. Looking at his team, he has no switch into V create, so I was like, yeah, I probably should have brought in Victini. I mean, he does have Greninja as a switch, and maybe Lander T can take it and then come in and then U turn on me or something like that. But still. I wanted to get the Sword's Dance up and try and break through his team at the same time. But unfortunately, I'd be missing these Mega Horns like two times in a row. Um, so that kind of sucks. He gets, uh, I think, Stealth Rocks up as he goes to Protect. I mean, that's fine. That Sword's Dance up, I knew I could take a Gyro Ball. So I was like, all right, I could probably knock out Ferrothorn and provided it not going for Stealth Rocks or anything like that, I could stop it from doing that. But unfortunately, it gets the Stealth Rocks up. So that kind of stinks for me. Um, yeah, there's nothing you can really do about that. That's Pokemon. You just miss sometimes. So, finally hit it. Does a decent amount. But after Ruff's uh, Iron Barbs, I mean, I would go down to another hit. Uh, but at least I would knock out the Ferrothorn regardless. So that would have been nice. But he got rocks up and he keeps the Ferrothorn. So that stinks. Oh well. So I bring in Victini. It's not looking too good for me because he has that Mawile, which literally if it has Sucker Punch and Fire Fang, it just destroys my team and play Ruff which will be the deadly combo, which, I mean, most of the time I don't really run into Fire Fang Mawiles. Most of the time they're Brick Break or Knock Off, so I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. We'll see. So he brought in Lando. Obviously, I don't want to lose my Victini because it's one of my best ways of just knocking out Pokemon on this team, so I decided to sack Garchomp here. I should have just sacked it to the Thunderous, honestly. I don't know why. Like, I just wanted to play more aggressive with the Venectric. I should have played it more safe. Um, I guess maybe I just underestimated him because... Um, just did not expect the fighting MZ right there on my top of Feeny, you know. It just doesn't make sense to do that, but he expected Minectric or maybe Garchomp, you know, might as well uh, predict me and get a knockout since obviously I'm not going to take a Thunderbolt to the face with top of Feeny. It's pretty nice versus his team. So, bring in Victini, knockout is Thunderous as he keeps Landers, which is smart because it's Scarf Mon and it's able to outspeed Victini once I go from V Crate. But he decides to bring in Greninja. So uh, this maybe gives me a shot to go into Ferrothorn, maybe Leech Seed him a little bit. Because Ferrothorn actually looks not too bad versus Greninja, Mawile, and Landorus, provided if the Mawile doesn't have like Knock Off or Fire Fang, because it could be Swords and Thunder Punch, Sucker Punch, and Play Rough. Like, that's a set that I've ran into before. So you never really know what the Mega Mawile sets. Um, just gotta hope and pray that it's not gonna be able to hit your Ferrothorn. But I mean, most of the time, you're gonna have to hope for the worst, or prepare for the worst, because it's probably gonna be carrying something to destroy it. So he actually gets some spikes, um, so I was kind of hoping that he would just like lay up all the spikes so I can go into Top Fini and Defog, but he goes in a while now, which uh, kind of sucks. I was thinking about going for a double Leech Seed, but just an off chance he did go for some spikes some more, and um, I do just want to try and Defog them away, because that could be pretty annoying for Victini, and... Maybe Victini is my best shot of winning with V Create. Like, that's what I'm gonna hope for with Ferrothorn. So, gonna go for the Defog over here as Mega Mawile is probably gonna just knock out Top Fini. That's what I'm expecting. I'm kinda hoping that it's not gonna be Sora's Dance, but most Mega Mawiles are. So, um, at this point, I'm just like, yeah, Mega Mawile, just take my life. It's, I already know you're like one of the best breakers in the game. Just destroy me. He, he actually has like uh, two of the, one of the, or I guess. Poopon bounce pretty good too, but two of the one of the I guess top five. Like I'm trying to say, like Thunderous is a really good wall breaker as well with Fighting MZ with nasty plot with Mega Mawile Swords Dance. But there are some other ones. I want to say Thunderous is like top two or top three, but one of the best wall breakers in the U tier. So uh, it's able to break through the seam and it has the perfect move slot of Fire Fang, Sucker Punch, and Play Rough. So um, that's pretty deadly versus me. And that's going to be a GG versus Loco. I think the tides really shift when um, I missed the Mega Horn and I lost my Manectric to the Fight DMZ Thunders. That really shifted his, um, you know, his, uh, what am I trying to say? I don't know. I guess, like, putting the battle toward him for winning. So, yeah, that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, do your thing. And thanks for watching. Peace, peace, everybody.